Yeah. What's your social security number? <laughs> Nine one one. Uh, no. Two three four. <laughs> How's your credit rating? <laughs> always getting to um, like depending on like who is cast and all that I love working with people that you know I really respect and admire I mean I'm on a stage with Zim and Gurr I mean that's a pretty freaking awesome moment. Thank you. Um, no it's, it's always great to get to work on a show with people that you've worked with before uh, Patrick Seitz is a dear friend of mine, um, and he has directed me on several projects at Fire Emblem. Um, he didn't do Tales. But either way, he's directed me on several different projects, um, including, uh, by the way, the Blaze Blue anime, by the way. So, um, yeah, but it's always great to get to work with friends because you know each other, you know how that person works, you build up a very good uh, work relationship, and it's, it's great. So that's always my favorite experience. But um, I just feel really lucky for all the characters that I played. Like I can honestly say there isn't a single character that I haven't played. So I just that's been my favorite part. And coming to meet you guys at cons, like cons is great. So cons are great. See, oh my god, I can't talk. I speak English for a living. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Katrina. Um <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I think my favorite uh, uh, experience uh, as far as behind the scenes. Uh, it's kind of this. It's similar uh, meeting creative people and like-minded people. Uh, I know it's cool to be a nerd now, like, but when in in my day, uh, it was not cool to be a nerd. It was not cool to be a theater kid. It was not cool to be a dork. Um, and I was all of those things, which is also cool to say now. Like girls are like, oh yeah, I was totally a nerd in high school. I'm like, really, really, were you? Yeah. Were you? Because I remember you were a cheerleader. And uh, but uh, yeah, so. Now having sur being surrounded with like-minded people that are also weird and being able to like start a storyline and be like, well, today I woke up and I went to the market. It was lovely. How did you enjoy your market experience, man? I haven't gone yet. See? <laughs> but like, you'll they'll pick stuff up and it's just fun. It's fun to be surrounded by nerdy people. That's Ricky, it. Ricky is a fecal sculptor and he made a sculpture right here. That was better than the movie. <laughs> After Prometheus, nothing can ever hurt me again. <laughs> <laughs> I waited so long. <laughs> Why, Ridley Scott? Why? <laughs> my, my, the great, aside from working with uh, my, my friends and having fun in the booth, I just have to say that the, the highlight of my career was um, in voiceover, in any case, was uh, I was a huge Sid and Marty Croft fan growing up. I watched all the shows, H.R. Puff and stuff, and Lindsville, and all of them, and Electra Woman and Dinah Girl. Electra Woman and Dinah Girl, fighting all the evil things. Uh, oh, yeah. And I... Marty Croft, and one day Chris Zimmerman, the director of uh, Billy and Mandy, said, um, 
We have a surprise for you. Guess who's going to be playing uh, the granny in the in the pie episode? And it was a woman by the name of Billy Hayes, who was Witchy Poo and Weenie on um, Lidsville. And I was like, I was like a giddy kid over the moon because I was so excited. More than that, she did Witchy Poo for me, and, and then I, I did my uh, Charles Nelson Raleigh for her. Went, oh, hello, Weenie. Oh. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm having uh, lunch. I'm having dinner tonight with Alice Ghostly and Charles Nelson Riley to celebrate our birthdays. I said, oh my God, I would, be, I would kill just to go. Can I go? And she goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a question here. Okay, hi, my name is Josh, and I have three questions. The first two is for Matthew. Start Math with the third one. The first two is for <laughs> Matthew, and then the third one is for all of you. Okay, number one. Matthew, what Power, Word, Power Ranger did you play? Two, can you do your best Chrome voice when he does the final smash of Super Smash Bros. with you? <laughs> and three, which is for all of you, what is the best pun that you ever heard? Best pun? Pun you ever heard? What was the best Carnival? pun, pun we ever heard? I think. Carnival? Pun? What? Like, knock, Carnival? knock. <laughs> Again? Like joke. Like a joke. Oh, joke. Oh, a play on words. A pun. Can you win? Yes. <laughs> there we go. That was it. Um, first question. I mean, I, when I played the old SNES Power Rangers game, I liked to play the Red Ranger. That was fun. <laughs> I didn't actually play an actual Power Ranger. Like, played one. Um, although, I could see him getting confused with uh, you know, the Yellow Ranger. <laughs> Me being very petite and female. <laughs> um, and second question was crom related. Best crom voice. Best crom voice? I can do a pretty good crom impression. Believe Super it or not. Super I'm practicing. <clears throat> this is for you, my friend. You are the wind at my back and the sword at my side. Together, my love, we will forge a more peaceful world. Just you and me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Up. Um, so, I, again, it goes back to Model Grab, and the third episode, something happens to one of the characters. She gets decapitated. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert! And um, when Model Grab first came out, uh, Carrie Karenin, uh, who's the voice of Mommy, and I were signing together, and there's this big poster, and you know, all the girls are in the front, and then Kyoko's goes all the way in the frickin' back. And she was like, you know, I don't see you. Where are you? Oh my gosh, you're all the way back here. Like, she would just tease me about that. And then I would just look at her and I'd just say, you know, that mommy, she's, uh, she's got good, you know, she's got a good head on her shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's true. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Sounds legit. Thanks for coming, everyone. I can't top any of that. Um, yeah, 
penny's pretty hard to talk. <laughs> a peddler walks into a restaurant and orders a lot of food. When it comes time to order, he gets up and he shoots the waiter. And the waiter says, why? Why did you shoot me? He's all, panda, look it up. He looks it up and says, panda, he eats, shoots, and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to pick one? No. No, I have a joke about that, but so, he eats bush and leaves. So... <laughs> Assuming what part of the world was this this restaurant in? Well, probably Texas. Okay. <laughs> hey, okay. Hey. Gun. Oh, handgun. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's a talking panda who has a licensed firearm, and he purposely went into this restaurant with the intention of with the intention of killing this person just so he could say that. Yes. Now why would the panda do that? This is tough question. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Vito, and I have a question for the one for Ger uh, for uh, Tim and Ger. Can you ask her why was there bacon in the soap? <laughs> hey, uh, hey, girl, um, why is there a pig in the cell? I slaughtered a pig. <laughs> <laughs> So you got pig. <laughs> right. So you were able to get this pig to go over to the water. Oh, okay. So now you're making sense. The pig was at least wrestling. Now, what was your intention to slaughter this pig in a bucket of water? It seems like a very long process. Well, uh, if you hit it a couple times. <laughs> I got nothing for that one. <laughs> 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 Invaders of my childhood. 